Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us. I've got a fabulous guest to bring you again today, a lovely, lovely lady, very exciting topic. So let me just talk, uh, tell you a little bit about the topic today. It's working at what you love and surviving a pandemic. But we're actually going to also do some deep divings in and around that what you love and certainly what Carol loves. So my guest today is Carol Medcalf. Welcome, Carol. Thanks, Sonia, and um, thanks for having me on. Oh, it's lovely having you here. Let me give you a little bit of an insight uh, about Carol listeners here. So she's a director of The Wandering Women, and she's a sociologist and a traveller and a women's supporter, which is really fabulous. She has got amazing stories to tell you. So I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about her background and her story. Go for it, Carol. Okay, you know, So... I started traveling when I was um, about 16 and I left home, which was a small surfing town on the south coast of New South Wales. And I jumped on a bus, a greyhound bus as it was. <laughs> and um, I took myself off to the big wide world and I ended up in Byron Bay, which was another small surfing town on the north coast of New South Wales. So I didn't really travel that far. <laughs> in terms of places I just traveled far in terms of geography in those days and um and I lived on the beach in a tent um and I surfed a lot and um fell in love with being in different places and finding new people and exploring and seeing different things mm. um and I've been doing it ever since and I don't want to talk about how long that is um but i've done it all my life i've done it with work i've done it with um my pleasure time and i try and make sure that there's lots of pleasure time and i've been around the world about four or five times i always bought around the world tickets because it was a cheaper way to travel with but getting me long distances so um i did that three or four times, I think. And then I've chosen different destinations um, to spend time in, usually a couple of months at a time. Um, and the odd six month stint in different countries. So yeah, yeah lived all around Australia. Yeah. Okay. So you lived in several states of Australia as well. Yeah. <laughs> so New South Wales, Tasmania, Western Australia, South Australia. Uh -huh. And spent lots of time in Queensland, Victoria. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, you are uh, someone who loves travel. And look, people, listeners here, this is just scratching the surface. Carol is a very interesting person, but certainly uh, has loved uh, her travel and can tell you many, many stories, which we will deep dive a little bit into what she does with that and what is on offer for you. But uh, I certainly wanted to just sort of bring to attention here, Byron Bay listeners is where Chris Hemsworth from Thor, uh, he and all of the different Hemsworths are there and it's actually become extremely popular. It used to be very much so um, a little bit hippie, alternative, quiet little uh, seaside town and it's actually become recently uh, you can barely get in now on, on any of the real estate and it's become so, so trendy. I was interviewing uh, someone, one of our um, original uh, uh, TV chefs, uh, one of our first TV chefs here in Australia, I interviewed her a little while ago and she said, oh my gosh, it's changed so much. We all, people that have been here for so long, we want to get out of there. So I'm like, oh, well, I wouldn't mind actually going and, and uh, bumping into the Hemsworths. So <laughs> It sounds very interesting. So we're talking about our topic, working at what you love. So Carol, you obviously love travel. Tell us a little bit more, some tips around that. And then we'll also talk about what you actually do offer. So working at what you love. Yeah. So I've been lucky as a sociologist to find lots of um, the work that I do both interesting and rewarding and all of those things. But as I was coming to um, 
towards the end of my sociology career, I thought, what is it that I want to do for the rest of my working life, which I hope goes on for some time. And I wanted to find something that combined um, my two passions, one being culture and people and um, an understanding of what, how people live um, and doing that around the world in places that I'd visited and places I wanted to visit. And so one, that's how I came to be working at as um, a director of Wandering Women. And I built uh, a business around the, those two passions. And I get to share it with women who are on their own who don't want to necessarily travel with big groups and who don't want to pay more for being on their own um, because we don't charge any, any single supplements, but who were interested in not just visiting, say, if you go to Italy, not just visiting Rome and the Amalfi Coast as we do, but finding out a people who live there and how they live and what they do on the, in their daily lives. So it's a bit about combining all the touristy places with a bit of understanding of how locals live and um, yeah, making a bit more interesting, a bit more real. Mm, I love that. I love that mm. idea because as we get a little bit older, uh, we really do want to not be in all the typical tourist things, but to really find out what sets this particular destination differently compared to another one. What is it that is the beauty of each of these different places? Um, yeah. And you and I, we've travelled around, I've travelled around all Australia. I haven't been overseas yet. So, um, you know, now that I'm starting to become an empty, empty nester, I'm going to maybe have to hit you up for that one as soon as all yeah. of it, we're allowed to do all of these things. <laughs> but So tell me then, because I, I really like this idea and, and people that are listening and you should be sharing this out with other people because I think it's a great thing that you do offer as far as helping individuals to feel secure and safe with a group and uh, that they can get out and about. So tell us a little bit more about what is it that you do do? Okay, so we take a maximum of 10 and I'm usually one of the 10. Um, so there's nine other women and um, we go to a, a range of places. So I have five international tours and four Australian tours. Um, and that I chose those places because I know them well. I've been multiple times to all of the destinations and I've seen, I've seen them in different phases of their growth and development, but I've also managed to make good, put together good networks in those places. Mm. Um, and those networks are the local people who help share some of their own local experiences, but also to tap into new local experiences as um, each year goes, as you would know, any place grows and develops and changes and being from somewhere else, you don't always get to know what they are until you go back again. Mm. Whereas for me, I have those networks in place and they're happy to share, oh, you must you must come and try this place because it's new and it's it's buzzing and everybody's loving it and it's uh, it's all of these things or ah oh, they've changed this over here and you really need to go and have a look because now you get to experience a whole lot more in that village that nobody ever used to visit you know those sorts yeah. of things yeah. yeah yeah so they're the sorts of experiences that um, I really enjoy and they they, they are um, identified for me by local friends that I've made over the years and yeah. kept fortunately yeah which is so so important you know that's that almost like word of mouth marketing it's that networking with people knowing where all the really great things are that are not always yeah. typically on a map or always not typically promoted, you know, they're, they're the best kept secrets, you know, to have those yeah. networks is really, really cool. 
So going into 2021, you're offering these tours in and around Australia. I am. So Tasman, and and fortunately, we're in a position at the moment where everybody is saying we're opening up our borders again. Um, So by the, yeah, I know. Um, So by the time we get there, or by the time the tours uh, are ready to operate, um, all of the borders, I hope, will remain open. So we've got Tasmania, we've got Western Australia, and in Western Australia we do um, the southern part of the state and then we fly up to the northern Kimberley area, Mm. which is so dramatically different from the, the southern part of the state. And then we've got a a new South Australian Northern Territory combined tour. And the South Australia one um, goes to Kangaroo Island, as well as going up to Darwin and then back to the centre and Uluru and all of those things. And um, I've spent quite a bit of time working with Aboriginal communities in Western New South Wales and also with some of the people in um, Central Australia. So um, yeah, just a a good opportunity to see not only the best of what South Australia and Northern Territory have to offer, but also an opportunity to experience um, Indigenous culture that's local and Mm. um, really quite dramatically different. So Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the south coast of New South Wales is that other tour that we offer. Yeah. And I grew up on the south coast, as I said. So very familiar with all of the area from Sydney south to Eden, which is as far south as we go. And then we go up through the southern highlands to go home uh, or to go back to Sydney. And, um, And again, the coastal area plus the highlands are quite, they're quite different. Um, but they're quite stunning. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. You know, I did a lot of travel um, BC before children when I was rich and I didn't know it and <laughs> would would uh, not have the maps and not have the GPS and would just go, turn left here and let's find out what we could do. And one of the things, like I've got lots of friends and family all over Australia, so it's really great to get those, oh, go here, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. That's really great. But over time, you know, you you lose touch, things change. And I think that it's, yeah. it's a really great idea to have someone like yourself who keeps it small in-house and, and keeps it, um, you, you keep current with those networks because those yeah. sorts of things that are that are out there, they're changing quite regularly. Like I've watched some of the shows recently about uh, the, the latest sort of things because uh, my husband and I were sort of thinking, oh, maybe we might actually have a caravan next year and start travelling. Um, and there's lots of changes out there. Oh, yeah. Off the off track sort of things and stuff like that. So I think that's really awesome that you're offering that. What are some of the yeah. other benefits with what you actually offer uh, with these small groups? What are the, some of the benefits that come along with that? Um, well, if you have larger groups, you end up in chain type hotels mm. um, because they're the only ones that can accommodate those larger groups. And so one of the things that I'm able to do is to try and tap into some of the local hostelleries and the, um, the, the smaller boutique type hotels, which is what I prefer. Yeah. And they're usually, again, they're usually local people um, who will keep me up to date with what's current in each of the areas. So, and they're a bit more personable. Um, you get, chatty owners you know who want to talk to everybody and all of a sudden you feel like you've known people for ages because they've been telling you about their their family or their cousins or you know the business that they've been in for however long they've been in it some of them are generational um in some of the european countries particularly but even in tasmania uh, um in western australia there are some generational um businesses that we deal with that are smaller and much more intimate I guess is the word that I would use yeah Yeah. and 
And so you feel like you're visiting friends um, as opposed to dropping into a hotel. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the benefits. The other, the major benefit for me is I've, I refuse to use, and I've always done it, but I refuse to use people who charge a single supplement because you're on your own. And it usually doubles the price of any travel that you do. Um, and so it precludes people from doing lots. So whenever I found a decent place that didn't charge a single supplement, I used to write it down and I keep a little book. And so over the years, I've got a whole host of people who don't charge single supplements. And then I used to be a union organiser um, in a variety of unions. <laughs> and so I learned how to negotiate well. Uh -huh. And so for even those ones that do charge single mm -hmm. supplements, I negotiate out of the single supplements. Um, and they're happy to do it because I'm bringing nine people with me, you know. Yeah. So it just made, it made business sense to me. And then when I added that with my negotiation skills, it worked really well. Um, so there's that as well. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Oh, one of the other things is that quite often the women who come don't have, they come on their own, um, they sign up on their own, but they make really good friends and then they might want to go and visit somewhere that I don't go, but they've got people that they can go with and mm. they're the friends that they make on these tours. Mm. So it's a bit of development of, women's networks amongst the women that travel mm. as well mm. so yeah they're I think they're the three major bonuses yeah yeah cool. sounds really good you, you, it's bringing back lots of um, memories from my, my mum has traveled when when she was with us she traveled extensively all over the world and because she was um, a lot of the times on her own and with teachers so she would obviously try to not just her but her, or a lot of them try to get together as groups themselves as yeah. teachers and to either travel together or connect up with other teachers overseas yeah. and things like that. And yeah. most of the times it worked out really well. Look, some of the times it was a bit difficult, especially if it was with one other person that they didn't know. So I like the idea that it's a small intimate group that you offer uh, and it's a chance for people to make friends, to share uh, to share a really great experience with because a lot of those women yeah. would have those um, different sorts of reasons for doing that we spoke briefly about that maybe you might want to elaborate on that a fraction more the uh, the, the typical sort of person who because people listening to this they might be going am I the right person to be part of this group so who yeah. would be the typical or ideal person to be part of the, the groups that you have so Typically, we're looking at women who are 45 years and older, um, who are on their own. And when I say on their own, they may not have a partner that they can travel with, or they may not have any friends who are available to travel at that time. Um, and they're, or they've traveled with their friends and their friends are working and they're not any longer. Mm. And so, they want to go more often and so they're looking for somewhere or someone to travel with. Yep. Um, yep. Sometimes they're women who have partners who don't want to travel mm -hmm. um, and the partners are quite happy to have them go off and travel with another group of with other women. Um, sometimes they're just women who think I'd really like to go with a group of other people but I don't I feel com more comfortable traveling with other women because the reality is when you look at some of the larger um, tour groups mm. and they're mixed, mm. the, the itineraries are very much focused on trying to get everybody's interests and things um, met. And men, male interests are quite often quite different quite to different. women's yes. interests. <laughs> yes. um, and so it's, it's much easier to focus a tour with all women yeah. um, because you've got a range of interests, but 
you see it from a different perspective yeah um, as as a group of women than yeah. if you're traveling with a group of men yeah so that it's just easier to do it like that for me yep. um and for the women that travel they've that travel with us they've said very much the same thing yeah yeah the other thing is of course that all of the tours you have all the women who travel have their own room their own ensuite rooms for every tour so you've got the opportunity to spend time with other people but then you've got somewhere to retreat Mm. at night if you want to mm. um, and just capture your thoughts for the day or rethink what you want to do in the morning or any of those sorts of things but you have a little privacy if you want it yeah. and I found that at our age at the age of 45 plus because I have to admit to being 45 plus um, <laughs> then those private times are really important you know Absolutely. it's that whole processing what have I seen today what do I think about what I've seen today all those sorts of things yeah. really important and you can't do that if you're sharing rooms or if you've got somebody talking to you the whole time or yes. yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. I can really appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> Again, I'm yes. more memories come back for the various different sorts of yes. situations I've been in. And I do like my private time. Um, yes. And I like small the idea of small groups. And I like the idea that it's not a typical touristy thing. And someone like you, who is who is a sociologist, who is into finding out those other bits of extra, you, you would bring a whole lot of extra information, the whole did you know, uh, uh, to the, you know, a lot more entertainment to those groups, which I think is really awesome. It's, it's funny, you know, it took me a while to work out that the things that I spend a lot of time researching and the things that I found interesting were actually the thing, and even the things that I discovered while I was traveling um, were actually the things that other women found that they were interested in as well. It took me a while to work that out. <laughs> um, so yeah, some would say a slow learner, but it's better that I learned than I didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And look, it's always lovely to be part and parcel of someone who's sharing what they love uh, and has certainly got the experience that you've been doing it since you were 16. So I think that's yeah. really awesome. And the fact is that through this time too, by also sharing this information with people listening, is that giving people hope to look at how they could perhaps do their business slightly different when we've had things like this pandemic that has come along and hit us all sideways and certainly um, tourism in particular how could we position it differently how could we enjoy it differently and to to really go when when and, and trust in someone and go to someone who <clears throat> can provide them a whole lot more information and experiences like yourself I think well really awesome. Yeah, when I, I was actually working in an Aboriginal community in Western New South Wales, and I made, and there wasn't a lot to do in a small town, which was 85% Aboriginal of an evening, there was not a lot to do. And so I decided that I would do a course in tourism partly because I had responsibility for running an Aboriginal cultural um, center and um, and I didn't have any knowledge about how to run that properly so I went off and did a tourism course and then I thought oh this is a bit interesting and so then I did a guide to a guiding course and then I did a, a run run a tourism agency course and so when it came time for me to make that decision that I talked about earlier um, I had the training that I needed to to shift into another industry and I've worked across five industries in my life so shifting into another industry was just like it was pretty standard really for me <laughs> but it, com it, it combined the passions that I had yeah. and so it was even more useful it was more interesting um, and since then, like since the COVID thing happened and tourism fell in a heap, 
people said, well, what are you going to do? And I've spent most of this time working on the tours and making them, as far as I'm concerned, a bit more interesting and a bit more inclusive. I've expanded every tour, which, of course, you would do if you want to go and see places. Yes. <laughs> so each of the tours has grown by about two or three extra days, but also by fabulous um, experiences yeah. um, that I can't wait to share with people. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the end of um, our closed down period. I'm sort of yes. jiggling around on the chair going, yes, I can see this. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, definitely. So that's going to yeah. be starting in your 2021 approximately. Well, okay. So because it's been a while since I've traveled, Yep. and uh, <laughs> quite a while because <laughs> of kids and things and so I was looking at and I've normally done it quite a lot on my own with having to do it as part of um, a group what would be the processes in prepping to get ready I mean if if someone's looking at how many months in advance to get organized what is it that they'd need to get organized prior to and all of those sorts of things especially with partaking in your um tours well one of one of the things that people don't realize i think is that because people are traveling so much more almost everything is booked out months in advance mm. So you really have to make a decision that you're going to go somewhere months in advance. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything much for a couple of months after that, but you have to actually make the decision um, because otherwise people, tour operators like me, go to book, make bookings and all of the things that you want to do and places that you want to stay are booked out because other people are already making up their minds to do that. So once you make the decision, you can sit back and think about other things or think about what you want to do, but you do have to make that decision early. So um, would uh, an approximation be four months, six months? Uh, for, for the international tours, at which we're not going to run in 21 anyway. I, I think most people will not run international tours in um, 2021 um, for all the COVID reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but for international tours, normally you would need to start thinking about it six months in advance at least. Okay. And probably a four to five months for Australian tours. I know because we've got our borders closed at the moment, it may even be um as much as six months for tasmania western australia south australia um at the moment i know tasmania is booking up fast wow mm, mm. yeah exactly and it is yeah. such a beautiful place um yeah i've got you know all of these different places are beautiful places so yeah. other sorts of tips so a lot of the people listening to this are small business owners so yes they would need to get themselves organized uh is there any other sort of guidance that you would give them or basically that they really they reach out to you and you guide them along with those decisions and stuff yep i would um one of the things that i've started saying to people um to the women on the tours is 15 kilograms of luggage is plenty mm -hmm. um and the re and the reason for that is people um, taking more can't move around easily yeah. find it difficult to get up and down stairs if we need to yeah. um, all of those things and 15 kilos is very doable we're all used to carrying shopping bags with probably that much in them so um, you know it's very doable and the thing is you don't use half the clothes that you pack if you're taking 20 and 21 kilos so you might as well cut out that and do 15 kilos and i've um recently bought myself well i don't halfway through last year i bought myself a little orange um, american tourista on four wheels and it takes 15 kilos and it fits everything it, absolutely everything mm. So, um, yeah, and I 
and I pack quite well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I use packing cubes. I recommend packing packing cubes for people. Um, it organises everything for when you're when you're travelling. You can find everything really quickly. Okay. Um, yeah, they're they're great asset. I, I don't think I've ever used a packing cube. I don't think I even know. I, I, I'm visualising some things, but whether it's the right thing or not, I don't know. I've never done that. And I've had um, uh, in the past a job where I had to travel all over Australia. So, I'm like, oh, gosh, the, the things you do learn when you have travelled quite a lot and you're having to lug things around. And the reason why I was laughing so much, my mum was a shocker with that. A shocker. Yes. Did not need, <laughs> did not use. And, yeah. No. Oh, no. gosh. Yeah, and, and there's and those I'm, things I, like um, uh, whether you do need a bit of wheelchair assistance or just because if you've got a, a bung foot for something or with stairs specifically or this or that, there's so many other tips around yeah. that. Mind you, if you are travelling, it's best to not have bung foots, feet. Yeah, <laughs> feet. feet. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I can't no, I was, I was just going to say I should have brought my packing cubes to show you, but they they're about so big by so big, and they've okay. got mesh at the front so that you can see what's inside. Okay. And I take and and then you can get larger ones. They usually come in packs of three. Okay. Um, you can get them from, from some of the larger shops, the okay. you know, the Tarje type shops yes. for. Twelve dollars. Don't okay. have to pay a fortune, or you can get bigger, flashier ones if you like. Um, but you can fold four or five dresses into some of the bigger ones, or yeah. two or three pairs of pants and tops. And it means you don't have to go rooting through everything to find where your undies are, or where your yeah, yeah. Um, your you tops are, or where your you costumes go and grab are. Something and it goes. <laughs> Out of the bag yeah. in front of everybody. The airport. I've had that too. Look, oops. Yeah. <laughs> Underwear, I quickly shut <laughs> Yeah. Particularly if you're actually at customs and you're trying to find something. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm going to show everybody everything. Yeah. yeah. But um, but packing cubes have, have been a real bonus, I think. Yeah. yeah. You would have so many tips, especially when it comes to the technology, you know, the tech gizmos yeah. to make and how to do and uh how to make it lightweight and all of those sorts of things that sounds really awesome yeah, yeah. um so, i was just gonna say that's me to travel just that it's an ipad yep yeah. ipad and books um files everything i need um internet and it's lightweight it fits in my carry-on luggage. Yep. Fabulous. That and your phone. Oh, gosh. Yeah, these days, people don't know how lucky they've got it. No, no they don't. Here I go. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, my day. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, even in my day. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is yeah. true. Look, I really, um, I really implore people who are listening to this to look into this and uh, to have a look at your website. It's got some wonderful yeah. information on that, wonderful pictures there. Get a little bit of a taste tester happening there to reach out to you. Of course, all of your details will be on the webpage that where I do place this uh podcast so heading into 2021 there's no point in me asking you what's on the horizon because we know that there's going to be quite a few tours coming out when's one of the first ones that you're thinking about um hopefully fingers crossed that it all, all goes according to plan is going to happen um february we hope is going to kick off the tasmanian tour Beautiful. um yeah and still really good weather in tassie yeah. at that time yeah and i lived in tassie for five years and roamed the island um, lots of times and every time I go back I I discover something new but I find lots and lots of old haunts so yeah I get really excited and some of the Tassie stuff that got burnt out um, in some of the bushfires yeah. has actually been rebuilt yep. um, and they've reopened stuff as well so nice. that's a bit exciting for me because yeah. there were things that we would have had to have 
um, not not had the the good fortune to experience, but now they're just wanting people to come and so, so all those things all reopened and then COVID happened. So the Tasmanians are looking for people to come and, and all share. All right, people, well. you've got to go and let's all get into that. No, not caravans, and you're not joining me in my caravan, but let's all get on to Carol's little groups yeah. <laughs> and let's go exploring. I love that idea. Yeah. Really, really love that. So is there any other uh, last-minute things? Oh, your offer, you have an offer or? would like to um well we i can do discounts for some of the early bird people um who book and yep. um and yes it would I, i'm still working out those things but they will be on the website very shortly okay, okay. Um, and if they come via sonia then yep. um i'm happy to give them a little bit extra oh you heard it here people so you just mention me sonia and yep. uh, Carol will look after you very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And of course, everyone, you'll know where to get that information on how to reach Carol on the website, sunnyclark.com. Click on the podcast tab there and Carol, Carol Medcalf will be there with her own page to then click on that and go through to there. So look, is, before we do a quick see you later or sign off, is there any last minute things you might like to say to the listeners? Um, yes, I, I'd encourage all those women who've been wanting to travel for ages and have been putting it off um, to think that now is the time because you never know. Um, and I think we've just experienced a year of you never know. Um, so, yeah, so yeah. make the most of it and um, and come on down to Tasmania and over to Western Australia and... Yeah. and um, all the other places that we go yeah, so definitely. love to have you with us oh that'll be nice i think that they were in great caring hands with you and i think that it is a good year like you said and the fact that there'll be a lot of uh, of those places to visit that they're just dying for some tourists so go tour in your own even if you know that go and look at it in a different way you're going to get well looked after by a lot of people i think <laughs> so it sounds really good <laughs> Look, I really thank you very much for spending your time and sharing your pearls of wisdom with us. Thanks for having me, Sonia. And, um, yeah, I hope to see you travelling as well. I look forward to it. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.